Welcome back to the Wake Man channel. So this is going to be the eighth addition to my wake boat ownership series. This has been a long time coming. I've just been waiting to get some clips from my season and I have some more episodes planned for this series as this series has done pretty well. Apparently there's a lot of you that like the wake boat ownership series. So we were out for our second camping trip of the season for the first weekend of June. And it was the first time I actually got back to back days of riding. It wasn't ideal conditions the whole time, but I made do with what I had. So I'll go ahead and share some of the highlight clips of the weekend right now. All right, so still working on getting some of my tricks back and getting back into the groove of things. Um, one of the things that I deal with this time of year a lot is that the lake is filling up, so there's a heavy amount of flow, um, and that generally means I have to change my speed going one direction, and then when I turn around, I gotta change it again uh, because the GPS doesn't take into consideration the movement of the water. Um, and I know you can use your paddle wheel, but in my experience, I still get better results from the GPS. All right, so let's go ahead and start getting into what this video is about. As you probably noticed from the thumbnail, this video is going to provide you with some tips on my experience with how to control your inboard boat at low speeds. If you've ever driven a boat, chances are maybe you started with a, an outboard engine, um, which is where the entire engine uh, is on the back of the boat and you can tip it up and down, move it all, move it all around. Um, or you've been on an in, what's called an inboard slash outboard, which means the engine is inside the boat, but the transmission and the rest of it is sticking out of the boat, and then and you can still move that piece up and down and move the prop around. And if you've gone from either of those situations to an inboard, you've quickly realized that controlling your boat at low speeds is much different on an inboard uh, than it is on an outboard or an inboard slash outboard. And there are very specific physics that cause this. Uh, most of this is due to the fact that on an outboard or an inboard outboard, when you turn your steering wheel, you are literally moving the prop around. You know, you're, you're turning the prop side to side. You can you can pick it up and down usually. Um, so, so when you're when you're backing up, for example, in an inboard outboard or in an outboard driven boat, uh, you you can literally steer the propeller and have the propeller pull you in the direction you want to go. Not the case with an inboard boat. With an inboard boat. Uh, you have the entire engine and transmission held within the boat and the only thing sticking out of the boat is, uh, and if I, if I give you kind of a side or give you an idea from the side, um, you'd have your engine here typically and your transmission here and then you'd have a shaft going down to a propeller and then behind that is a rudder. So this scenario with just a prop and a rudder behind it makes it quite a bit more difficult to steer at low speeds and in reverse compared to an outboard engine or an inboard outboard engine. Um, but there are some tips that I can provide you that'll help you to control that better. The bigger the boat, the harder it is to deal with that scenario where you just have a prop and a rudder. First of all, I'm sure there's a lot of you that have gotten into your inboard boat for the first time. You started backing up and your boat was not going in the direction that you wanted it to go. And that's because when you have the propeller in front of the rudder, when you're backing up, 
the, the thrust of the water is going this way. It's not going past your rudder at all. So the only thing that's coming past your rudder is just the water you're moving through. So although you can turn your rudder and it's gonna have an effect, it's not likely going to have the effect you want because your driving force is going this way instead of going past the rudder. There's a bit of a technique you can use to handle this um, and just handle your boat at low speeds. So we're gonna get into some clips here and I'm gonna show you what I do to control which way my boat's moving when we're at low speeds. Okay, so first of all, uh, you can see me dropping in here uh, and I actually have a video for how to, how to launch and load your boat with courtesy. So I'll put a link up right now in case you wanna go check out that video as well. Um, but uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to back off the trailer and I'm going to put it back in the first notch behind, uh, behind neutral. I'm not going to go hard behind that. Um, I'm just going to go to the first notch so that the propeller is moving very slowly. Uh, with most inboard boats, your boat is going to tend to turn in the direction the prop is spinning because the prop is basically grabbing water from that side. Um, so I just let it do that uh, and then when I get to where I want to start turning around um, I'm just going to turn my wheel all the way to the other side uh, in the direction I want to go and then I'm just going to put the throttle into the first forward position. Not, not very, really fast, just in the first forward position, very slow prop rotation and it's going to start turning me. Um, and then as I get started turning, um, I'm starting to go forward, but I want to stay in place. So then I'm going to stop and I'm going to throw the throttle back into the first reverse position and turn the wheel the other way. Um, and it, what it's going to do is it's going to cause the boat to rotate and stay mostly in the same spot. Everything that you do when you're in low speed situations, by a dock, anything like that, you want to use very light touches. And that's why I say stay in that first position in forward and first position in reverse um, because you want to do it in very light touches. Uh, the only time you, you might want to give it more of a thrust is if you are coming into the dock too fast, obviously you're going to want to reverse it a little harder, um, that type of thing. But in order to control the direction your boat is going, you just want to do light touches. So one light touch forward, turn the wheel all the way to the direction you want to go, then put it back into reverse, light touch and let it go back until you need to adjust the direction again, then throw it back into reverse forward position, and then turn the wheel all the way the other way. Um, you can see that I'm now bringing my wife into the dock and I'm just in that first forward position. When I start getting close, then I throw it into reverse and it just holds me there. Then I'm gonna pop it into neutral and I'm just gonna do light touches back and forward to keep it in position. Uh, she gets off and I throw it into reverse and get away. Um, and I'm turning my wheel all the way to the right which actually goes with the way the boat normally turns in reverse. And then I'm going to throw it back into that first forward position. Light touch, you know, turn the wheel all the way to the direction I want to go, in this case to the left, and then I start going forward. Now here, another tip to add on, um, this isn't my launch and load your boat with courtesy video, uh, but when you're loading your boat, it's best to keep that shift lever in that first forward position all the way until right as you're getting onto your trailer. So that way you can use your steering wheel because anytime you put it into neutral, put it in reverse, it's going to throw you out of alignment. So you want to keep it in that first forward position until you get all the way to the trailer. And if you're a little scared of the speed that you're heading into the trailer with, then what you can do is you can just tap it into forward and then tap it back into neutral, put it into forward and then put it back into neutral uh, and just keep on kind of slowly moving yourself forward. Every time you go into forward, you can kind of adjust your position because you have water going past that rudder. 
Um, so uh, anytime you try to turn the boat and you don't have water going past it, you're gonna have a lot less response. All right, so really my main point of how to control your inboard boat is just the fact that you need to apply light touches. And most of your steering is gonna be when you're in forward. So you could be reversing and you could go, you know, you can go from point A to point B, and as you get to point B in reverse, um, you might be st slightly turning, maybe halfway through traveling from point A to point B. Um, what you'll do if you start turning a little bit is that you're going to throw it into forward, throw it into that first notch of forward, turn the wheel the way you want to correct, and then throw it back into reverse and keep reversing. And there's been times where I'm at a dock this long, and let's say I'm this big on this scale, and I have to back up all the way because it's a pretty tight space. I don't have enough space to turn all the way around. That I'll be backing up and, and the dock is on the right side of me. So as I'm backing up, the boat's wanting to turn backwards into the dock, right? Um, so as I, what I'll do is I'll start backing up and then as it starts turning in, then I'll throw it into neutral and then throw it back into forward and I'll turn the wheel this way. So I'll turn the wheel this way and then go forward just a tiny bit and it's gonna correct that. Then I throw it back into reverse and just keep going back and then eventually it's gonna keep start turning back in again and then I'm gonna just do that again. And you just kinda of inch your way back uh, as slowly as you need to do that. One of the things that will complicate this is if there's a lot of wind or a lot of waves from other boats, it'll definitely make controlling your inboard harder. But you just gotta to try to do it in light touches as much as you can. Um, obviously it's always best if you have a few spotters on your boat uh, and what I mean by spotters is have uh, somebody in the bow and somebody at the transom or the rear of the boat um, and they can if you get too close to the dock they can put their hand out and push away from it um, or, or something to that effect you get too close to another boat whatever it may be um, so especially when you're learning for the first time um, it's gonna be best if you have some spotters with you um, at least one spotter all right, I hope this video helped you. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please leave comments below on ideas for future episodes to the Wake Boat Ownership Series. I've definitely been taking everybody's comments into consideration. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you can be notified of my future videos. I'll see you next week.